Uh, my first computer was a Commodore 64. And I got it in the 80s. And what was amazing about the Commodore 64 was the first experience I had in booting it up, turning it on, and then using it to connect to another system. And when that happened to me for the first time, all I thought of was, oh boy, the possibilities. And I was hooked. My career was set at that point in time. I knew I was going to be in technology. And that basic feeling of, oh, the possibilities, is the very same reason why Paul and Sanjeeva created WSO2 12 years ago. And they had a very simple mission, which is, hey, let's help connect the world. Let's help program the world. And with that program the world, it was the same feeling of, oh my gosh, the possibilities. And that world experience is something that they've actually been able to realize. The company's been around for 12 years now. We now have six offices around the world and we're just shy of 500 employees. As has been said, this is our uh, uh, event, or over a dozen events, uh, conferences that we've now held. And you know, in this event, we've had more than 300 registrants. Uh, this room is filled, there's standing room in the back there. And so it's very exciting to see uh, the growth and where we've become. Now, you know, what is it that WSO2 does and how have we impacted the digital transformation industry? And so I have a simple question here. First, how many of you use the tube to get here today? I only see, like, uh, come on, come on. Every, there's like half the room use the tube. Uber? Anybody with Uber? All right? Only a couple people took Uber, all right? Uh, okay, uh, how many in here paid taxes to Her Royal Majesty? <laughs> right? You know, uh, if you did either of those things, you have been touched by WSO2. We work with banks like Society General and Deutsche Bank to help you unlock your accounts to gain access to compliant services. We work with healthcare providers to unlock your patient data, like Quintile's IMS. We work with a lot of modern and emerging technology vendors to expose new consumer services, such as um, ordering on your mobile phone with Domino's, uh, purchasing tickets with StubHub. So we're touching all the aspects of your life, and we do this so much that we now cross and touch more than five trillion transactions a year with WSO2 technology. And this has been on an increasing level and it's growing significantly here. We take this a little bit further, our identity server now touches on a daily basis 40 million different identities. They do some sort of login, authorization event, and with deployments that we have going on with governments and telecommunications providers in various parts of the world, we're on our way to touching more than 200 million identities. 3% of the world's population will be logging in daily with our identity capabilities. Our API management technology has been deployed. It's been growing very significantly for us. There are now more than 400 enterprises that deploy our API manager. They manage 20,000 APIs, which themselves can reach and touch almost 200,000 organizations around the world. Oh, there we go. Sorry. Uh, this impact um, has also allowed us not only to have a diversity of technology, but a diversity of the way that we approach how we build software the people who build that software with us, and uh, the, the way that we approach open source. Uh, one of the things that I've been most excited about and proud of about joining WSO2 is that a third of our employee base is female, and a third of our leadership is also female. And on top of that, almost 40% uh, of our employees have multiple degrees, multiple bachelor's degrees, master's degrees, or PhDs. So we have a, a very strongly diverse um, internal culture, and that diversity allows us to have 
a broader spectrum and a broader vision of what we're doing with technology as well. And of course, we were originally known as an open source company. Our commitment to open source in the Apache way is unwavering. We now have 300 contributors contributing to more than 100 projects around the world, both our own projects and projects from third parties uh, uh, from both the Apache Foundation and other uh, governance bodies as well. So what is WSO's impact on digital transformation itself? And this is an interesting dichotomy that we are all facing. The world is running into an intersection of rapidly changing developer consumption models like VMs, microservices, containers, serverless APIs, functions as a service, lots of new highly fragmented programming languages, completely different development frameworks. And at the same time, we have both a breadth and a volume of IT assets that we need to connect to. There was a stat that I just learned recently. It blew me away. There are now 286,000 SaaS applications on the planet. I cannot even comprehend what they could all be possibly doing. The average knowledge worker has to work with 86 different SaaS applications. 86 different SaaS applications oftentimes requiring multiple identities. If we take a look at that and then also all the devices we need to connect, the APIs, whether they're internal or external, the data, the data in motion that we have to deal with on uh, billions of events per second, and also the billions of identities that we have to connect. This is a new form of IT asset, and they are all the foundation to our digital transformation future. And so as a CIO, you are faced with some basic challenges, some hard challenges and questions. How do you increase your agility? How do you enable developer choice empower developers, enable recruiting skilled developers while increasing your release velocity? And then how do you build and deploy with Google-style SLAs at that sort of scale, with that sort of availability, while having so many third-party services who have different SLAs of their own? When you deal with this, your first job has to be, how do I manage and connect all of these IT assets? But the challenge with connecting all your IT assets is that we have a growth in third-party providers. Those providers have different interfaces. They have different means for connectivity. And on top of that, we have a hyper-specialization in IT assets, and that specialization is really driving hyper-scalability. We need to have very nuanced architectures for each of these underlying assets to get the Google-level scale that we desire. And as a consequence of that, we oftentimes have very specialized development frameworks that are optimized for connecting to that singular type of IT asset. And so all of this together leads to a very fundamental problem, which is an IDG study that says last year, 49% of IT managers said that they have an IT skill gap issue. This year, it's 60%. And we're at the end of this year, and the trend data, when you look at the Cloud Native Computing Foundation, they did a similar study, it's close to 70% going into next year. This skill gap issue is not because we lack vision, it's the diversity of things that we need to connect and the diversity of programming models that are making it more complicated for us. What's interesting is that there is a way for us to address this complexity. And what we have found over the years is that there has been this massive movement towards APIs. And APIs first came onto the market as a way to provide a common language for applications to talk to one another. They opened up possibilities for monetizing digital assets. They also created a way for us to connect with our partners through storefronts. They are a form of a common abstraction that offers a way to simplify how you control and connect to these underlying assets. But they're not enough. They're very important. They are a control framework. 
But we've also learned that with these assets changing so significantly, you need an event bus. You need an event bus. There we go, thank you. <laughs> uh, which allows you to get notifications on what's changing and where it's changing. And then on top of that, because we have so much data at rest and data in motion, we now have the evolution of streaming and data processing and stateful all happening across these systems as a way, streams as a way for seeing what is adapting, what is changing in nearly real time against your applications. So what we're finding is that APIs, events, and streams are offering for us a common abstraction as a way to reduce the complexity of your IT assets and to unlock the new developer models and to offer your developers choice as they go forward. On top of unlocking new development models, they also offer us the potential of completely rethinking how we operate IT, a new form of IT operating model. You will hear a lot of people talking about serverless, sometimes called functions as a service, function-oriented programming. There's all variety of flavors of this, but you know, AWS has a product called Lambda, uh, Microsoft Azure has a hosted offering as well, but what serverless offers for us is the idea that we can connect our APIs, events, and streams into small logical units that are independently deployed and then triggered and scaled automatically by the infrastructure on demand. And what serverless does for us is it changes the model from a server-based to a serverless-based which changes the cost allocation hierarchy. In a server-based model, you have to pre-provision and have reserved capacity of your servers that you often pay for in advance or at least pay for with full capacity. However, in a serverless model, you have a cost allocation per request. This fundamental economic difference creates an incentive for developers to take their system and to decomponentize it, to actually componentize it even further, almost in a way where you have strong incentives to split your tasks into as many different subtasks as possible because it is cost beneficial to do so since you're only paying per request. This model can completely change how you develop, how you deploy, and then how you uh, cost allocate your IT budgets going forward. And so it's a very rich vision. It offers a lot of potential and, and it's an exciting future. And how do you get there? In order to get there, if we want to start working our way to this more effective vision of how we can operate IT, we need to first think about APIs, events, and streams because these are the common language, the common connectors that will allow you to unlock all of your IT assets into whatever operating model you desire. So you can do it with servers, you can do it with VMs, you can do it with functions as a service, you can do it in your cloud, you can do it in a public cloud. It allows you to give your developers a choice in programming languages, development tools, agility philosophy, philosophies, and it allows you to have a more structured approach to creating digital building blocks that can build upon one another in a recursive fashion with recursive consumption so that as you build more services, you get network effects and you get even faster velocity and exploitation of the assets that you have. So APIs, streams, and events are the best way you have to modernize your architecture into a distributed approach for bimodal IT. WSO2, we are a vendor for digital agility, for digital transformation. We have five products. Our products are really here to put you in a place where you can unlock all your IT assets as APIs, events, and streams. We do this today with our Sorry, the, there we go. 
We do this today, connecting all your IT assets, identities with our identity server, uh, your data in rest and your data in motion with our data analytics server, your legacy apps, your new apps, the online SaaS with our enterprise integration technologies, and we have an IoT server for connecting your devices. Once connected, you can expose them as APIs, events, or streams, and you can then write your own adaptive services with Java, JavaScript, or our language, Ballerina, and it connects through our API manager for governance, where you can do policy management, storefronts, monetization, registry for change management, and all of this gets exposed up to your developers, connecting them to whatever consumption model they choose. Again, exposing it out for Java, JavaScript, and Ballerina, for which we'll have a whole track on. And that ultimately allows you to connect the world and program the world with developers, employees, partners, admins, operators, and customers. Our business model is geared towards your success. We have a consulting methodology that we can use or use with our partners, which are essential to us, in giving you an approach to unlocking your IT assets. We have subscriptions which provide support and other services related to security scanning and patches provided and delivered exclusively by our engineers. We don't have a concept of first or second level support. We are an engineering delivered organization. And we have been in business for well over a decade. We have a number of very solid commercial references. And so our success is your success. One of the things I tell the analysts that I love is that our product, our intellectual property is licensed under the Apache license. It is a permissive enterprise license. It does allow for a variety of distribution without you needing a relationship with us. And this is not a disadvantage. We see this as a strong advantage because we must lean into each of you in a much more significant way to demonstrate the value of our subscriptions and our services so that you embrace our intellectual property and do business with us. So we see this as a badge of honor and not as a business liability. I'd like to wrap up now. We have a fantastic ecosystem. Our product fits with a lot of the technologies that you need to work with. Uh, uh, a lot of them are here. I want to encourage you to have as many conversations amongst yourselves and amongst our, our partners that are visiting with us. And on top of that, we have a great set of speakers across three different tracks over the next three days. We're going to be talking about our products, the business of digital transformation, ballerina, and modern technologies that are affecting how we operate IT. I'd like to now wrap up and introduce our founder, one of our founders, Paul Fremantle, who has uh, an elaboration on how adaptivity is going to be affecting business and IT. And he's a very inspirational speaker. Uh, I'm really looking forward to this talk. He also just finished his PhD. So if you see him running around the halls, he will bend your ear for as long as you want to, talking about IoT and security on his PhD that he just finished. But please welcome Paul Fremantle.